Hello, my name is Meredith Kutz, the Professional Development Associate here at MACE. I'd like to welcome you to today's webinar, Experiential Learning On Demand, Introducing Job Simulations from Fortune 500 Employers. It is my absolute pleasure to introduce Mehek Hassan from Forage. Take it away. Thank you, Meredith. Happy Friday, everyone, and Happy New Year. I'm so happy to be in front of the NACE community again, talking about Forage. I really admire NACE, and I believe that the work that you all are focused on, best preparing the next generation to achieve their career aspirations, to have fulfilling futures, it's pretty high on the list of most important work being done right now. I mean, seriously, it might be below fighting climate change and finding a cure for cancer, ending poverty and hunger, but it's up there in terms of importance. My name is Mahek. That's pronounced uh, like, what the heck? It's pretty different from how it's spelled, thanks to my mother. And I live in California with my fiance and my two fat and spoiled cats. I, a lot of my time outside of work lately has been spent planning a wedding. So wish me luck with that. Um, you know, often I find myself just wishing that Forage had been born sooner. So it could have changed the way that I began my own career search. Uh, we only started working with colleges a few years ago, around 2019. So it's pretty incredible that we now have over 400 school partners globally and 2 million learners on our platform. But I graduated in 2014, lost and confused. So I just wish I could have been one of them. I'm a first generation American. I'm the first to graduate from college in my family. And uh, maybe because I was the first in my family to go to college, I was really confident in my future prospects when I got admitted. Um, and, uh, you know, my parents, they were immigrants, they worked largely retail jobs, but they really believed that this was a land of opportunity and uh, that education was transformative and such an important tenet of equality. So they told me so long as I focused on school and worked hard, I'd have a better life than them. And they work mostly retail jobs, like I said. And uh, I, I believe that too. And I'm sad to admit, uh, I never really thought to use the career center until it was practically too late. I mostly paid attention to my professors. I hung on their every word. They were like rock stars to me. Anyway, I in the last webinar I did back in August, and some of you know me and uh, you know, attended that webinar too, I shared uh, the full story of how I began my quote unquote career search. But to give you the short version, uh, when I did go to the career center, it was just a blink before graduating. And I was in a state of panic, just wondering, what could I do that didn't involve math? That was always a big priority for me was to avoid math. And I didn't have anything special on my resume. I just uh, worked at CVS as a cashier and I made smoothies, a Jamba Juice. So, and I had no idea how to express myself to the companies that I wanted to work for. I had no idea what the work at most companies actually involved or any of the ways that I could show myself on my resume as a good fit for them or even begin to think much less uh, how they could be a good fit for me. And I thought myself lucky essentially because I had a friend who just referred me to a position uh, for an internship at Morgan Stanley. And I took that just for the clout of having a name like that on my resume. Um, and I actually wasn't too interested in it. So uh, I didn't like it. And even though I was offered a full job, uh, a full time position at the end of the internship, I declined and I ended up doing something else. And back then I figured that's just the way it goes. That's the process. You know, you apply, uh, you try something, you do it, and if you don't like it, you try something else. And now at Forage, I really see that that's not really career exploration. That's just applying for a bunch of different jobs. Um, I've worked in the talent acquisition space, in the employee engagement space, 
So I know how important helping people from all walks of life, you know, find their dream career at a good company, how that can really better the world. And this job um, that I do at Forage, working with uh, faculty, helping career centers and experiential learning teams uh, at community colleges, at universities, at technical schools, really any kind of educational institution, uh, helping them utilize the job simulations that employers have hosted for free in our library on our platform uh, within coursework as assignments in class and towards internship requirements. This is the most rewarding work I've ever done. And I'm gonna wear that out. You'll probably hear me say that a lot um, because I know it would have made a difference for me. As it stands, um, and a lot of these stats are, won't be surprising to anyone in the NACE community, most students admit that the main reason that they attend college is to get a job. And yet uh, we recently surveyed over a thousand students for our project, um, well, for our early talent conference back in November. And we found that only 14% of students believe college provides the skills needed to be successful in the workplace. And uh, the sad part is, is despite there being a place on campus, the career center that's designed specifically to help students achieve the goal uh, behind why they attended, it's horribly underutilized with less than 23% of students admitting that they look to their career center for career advice. We also know that uh, just like me, over half of students apply to a job just to increase their employment prospects rather than actually wanting to work for that company. And most students also just don't believe that the typical signals, you know, of what school they went to, their academic transcript, that they're the best indicators of talent. And so, you know, students know and uh, employers also know where only 46%, less than half of employers believe that college adequately is preparing students for the workplace. Uh, but the idea is that's okay. We'll just train them after the fact, right? After we've onboarded and trained them. But 30% of new hires leave in two years because the work wasn't what they expected. And the cost of attrition in the US, the cost of churn is around 6.4 billion. So everybody knows that there is this gap between education and the world of work. And employers all agree that it's important to find new ways to get students desk ready. Because currently, you know, um, even though there's so much money and time spent by employers describing what they do to candidates, trying to attract the right candidate, uh, diverse talent, advertising, career fairs, uh, onboarding and thoroughly training them, candidates are showing up unprepared and the idea is you train them, successfully onboard them, but they leave anyway and it's kind of madness and everyone agrees that it's time to find a new way to get students desk ready. And because ultimately, you know, despite all the pressure that there is on higher education to better uh, student employment outcomes, to fix this gap between education and the world of work. Ultimately, the burden of ensuring that their future candidates have the skills needed to be desk ready, it falls squarely on the shoulders of employers. So what does it mean to forage? Well, it's a verb. It's something that you do to tie into experiential learning. And experiential learning is all about learning by doing. But the official definition is to search widely for resources or provisions. And this makes me think, you know, what, well, let's first look at the sentence example. You know, gulls are equipped by nature to forage for food. What kind of uh, provisions, what does someone need to be equipped with to make it nowadays to be successful? Uh, should they be born into the right postcode, uh, you know, the right zip code to the right parents that have the right jobs? 
being able to have the right connections, getting the, into the right school, you know, the pretty name on your resume, having a high GPA, all those things really depend. And we believe that talent is evenly distributed. It's the opportunities that are not. And so the employers on forage are very much taking part in an effort to level the playing field. On our platform, students are given the opportunity, they're equipped by employers to forage for workplace specific skills via virtual job simulations that are available on demand. And so I guess Forage is also a noun because it's a place. It's an online open access place where world leading companies like Electronic Arts, BCG, Latham Watkins, Deloitte, over a hundred of them have hosted job simulations, which are like online training courses. And they're designed to give any learner from any walk of life the opportunity to try out what the actual work is like there in a self-paced simulation that involves hypothetical projects and tasks which mirror what actual employees do at these world leading companies. And there's no application, no barriers uh, to access them. They let students road test what the actual work uh, is like uh, without having to apply and do an actual internship. And the hands-on work experience they get doing these hypothetical tasks, they're able to list on their resume. They, uh, upon completion, participants earn an employer-sponsored certificate of completion for their resume. They also get better employment outcomes. They're better candidates. Uh, we surveyed our employer partners and they found that participants are two times more likely to land an interview compared to an applicant who hasn't completed uh, their simulation and often four times more likely to earn an offer. Right now, um, we have over 100 employers, like I said, 2 million learners and over 400 school partners that are working hand in hand kind of to globally bridge this gap between education and the world of work. And many educators use these uh, simulations that employers have hosted on Forage within classwork as assignments to help students connect dots between the theory they're learning in class and uh, they're able to see how what they're learning applies practically in a specific situation for a specific employer. So educators are creating a space uh, for students to forage for work skills um, and explore careers by trying out the actual work. And students are leaving class with more than just a grade, but also something to list on their resume. Our mission, or part of, a big part of our mission is to democratize career exploration. And the employers that host these simulations do it so that uh, they can train students you know, before they apply. And they're offering any and every institution a 24 seven virtual presence on campus and in classrooms. Because less important you know, than the name of your school or your GPA or who your parents were or who you know should be your ability and desire to do the actual work. So this is a way of um, looking at different hiring signals like uh, skills and potential, someone's fit and suitability. So my friends, this webinar is gonna highlight some of the challenges in place for scaling employer-sponsored experiential learning. And we'll show you how Forage provides an innovative solution. Uh, you'll get to see how one of our earliest school partners used job simulations on Forage to guarantee thousands of their students work experience and a serious application advantage. You'll also get to see how easy it is for an educator to package and distribute job simulations and track their student participation. And when we're done, you're gonna see how, uh, basically as soon as, right after this webinar, uh, how you can start using us for free. 
And there won't be much to stop you from delivering real high class employer designed work based learning to every student at your campus, I hope. I think this is really good timing for something like Forge to exist. Uh, and maybe it's one of the silver linings from the pandemic because in the conversations I'm having, more and more schools are really prioritizing work-based learning right now and experiential learning. Like just, um, you know, the shift to virtual learning at all, like the way that schools have done it at breakneck speed is awe-inspiring. You know, companies have struggled with that. So um, there's also all these grants and uh, programs around, specifically around creating work integrated learning, there's so much movement in this area. And schools and employers are making great strides uh, to bridge this gap. And the solutions mostly involve co-curricular, work-based learning delivered where students are in the classroom or in a way that their classroom teachings are, you know, incentivized some way towards their transcript or mandated, made a key learning requirement. So there's a consensus largely around a co-curricular approach because not all students have the luxury of doing optional. And uh, I, I personally didn't until it was too late. The best way to deliver career preparation is to integrate it into the core academic experience because career learning is best when it's administered the same way all learning is. The real challenges though, um, even though there's all these ways that you know we've seen colleges and universities collaborate to deliver project-based learning is scaling them out so they can reach every student because access to employers is not equal and depending on where your school's located you know if you're a small uh, school or a private college uh, in a rural area, community college. Um, not every school has access to big name employers or all the employers that their students want to work for. It takes time to build relationships and it takes time to set up these collaborations and create uh, work-based projects with employers. Um, there's also not always an easy way to retroactively integrate employer designed projects into existing courses without um, you know, uh, taking time to build the relationship with each employer. So oftentimes it's hard to retroactively add into a course. Um, so it takes time to collaborate with employers and um, there's also a bottlenecks in the process, right? Um, oftentimes, for the employer, uh, creating these projects just simply doesn't meet a true um, business need. So uh, they're basically creating projects just so students can be exposed to them, just so students can have a chance to experience what it's like to work there. And so there is delays there's to creating them. Um, sometimes funding is needed often to create these projects and Sometimes there's also barriers to access for students. They still have to compete or apply or be part of a special cohort to have access to them. Um, it's just not reaching every student and it's especially not reaching the ones who need it most. And I've heard of situations where, you know, instructors in one department will have uh, connect to an employer and they can arrange some type of uh, internship or work project for their students. There could be another instructor in the same department students would really benefit from that, but there's no coordination and um, no, no real way to share. And then there is the question of how do we drive large scale faculty participation? How can we get faculty to really be involved with um, co-curricular career preparation and work-based learning? Because, uh, you know, ultimately, universities and colleges, their theoretical underpinnings, they weren't designed to create job ready candidates. And I've spoken with so many career center leaders who've shared their strategies and desires to connect with faculty. And I've heard of ways of, uh, you know, baiting faculty into attending workshops and lunch and learns and experiential learning seminars. And uh, those are great tactics, you know but they haven't been successful in getting enough faculty participation. 
um, which we need to see real tangible results. And uh, when we were preparing for our early talent conference in November, we, we interviewed um, dozens of career centers and experiential learning professionals. And almost all of them pointed to faculty involvement as a key piece missing in the puzzle for giving students what they need. Uh, so not all faculty, some are awesome. You know, especially I think newer faculty, younger faculty, they know the burden of student debt very well and they want to play a role. Um, and, uh, you know, bridging the gap. And I commend all of you who are still thinking of ways uh, to make it known that faculty involvement is needed, that we need all hands on deck, and I mean faculty hands too, to solve this issue. Everyone should be focused on what career centers are focused on, um, especially faculty, because for too long, it's, you know, the classrooms have been out of the conversation at some schools. And so, but it's also not surprising, right? Because uh, some, some faculty just don't see it as their responsibility to build career readiness. It's not really a part of their academic job description. And so it's an extra effort for them. And it takes, if it takes time and effort, it's, um, it's harder to make a case that they, that they should do it. So if experiential learning is going to reach the classroom at scale, and we're going to get faculty to participate it uh, participate so that they can bring it into their class. It has to be simple. It has to be really easy and super fast, like effortless almost for instructors to include. And furthermore, it has to be really impactful. So instructors know that what they're doing is making a big difference. Studies do show uh, that for every percent increase in courses that contain an element of real work-based learning, employment outcomes on average increase by 5.4%. It's just that to date, there hasn't really been an easy way for faculty to quickly and easily utilize work integrated learning content um, or augment their subjects to include an uh, impactful aspect of experiential learning overnight. Um, with Forage, the job simulations, uh, they're kind of pre-made, you know, they're ready on the shelf, they're open for anyone to use the same way, you know, you might walk through a library and pick out a book, you can use the content in an employer's job simulation um, within your class to either enrich the subject or just to provide students a space uh, and the time to do some career exploration, to have something really nice for their resume. So employers uh, have already hosted job simulations on Forage, which anyone can use for free in their class. And employers are helping lay this bridge and are waiting to see all of the classes it will extend to. And so with job simulations on Forage, instructors can actually effortlessly become experiential learning rock stars and make that serious dent in employment outcomes. They have a pre-packed, employer-sponsored, work-integrated learning option that's available on demand. In minutes, they can ensure that their students are leaving class with something tangible for their resume that also checks off all of the NACE career competencies. And I love that schools, I've been hearing about schools that are working hard to educate faculty on the importance of career competencies, you know, encouraging them to create activities or just have a dialogue with their students about career um, preparation and the competencies in general. Um, and honestly, the job simulations, um, they embody all eight of even the revised 2021 NACE career competencies. It's uh, an impactful way of giving instructors a means to automatically uh, help students not just learn about them, but put them into practice through the projects in the job simulations. And I'm not going to, for the sake of time, I will not uh, read through how all the ways the job simulations incorporate the NACE competencies, but we will be sending you this deck after and uh, check them out. Um, you'll, some of them even cite the exact uh, simulations and tasks in which they're included. So this will be here for you. Here's what we know today. Instructors all over the world are willing and able to quickly add a highly impactful 
element of employability into coursework, even as extra credit or, you know, if not required. Um, and most of these use cases were surfaced by career centers and experiential learning teams. So Forage is really a resource that I want you to think about extending beyond the career center. Um, it can be adopted easily in classrooms. And they're already becoming a common and highly valuable component of coursework uh, that is being deployed department-wide. And so I actually wanna show you a video that one of our earlier school partners, uh, McCreary University made about the impact they've had using Forage. Macquarie Business School has developed a way to provide world-class work integrated learning opportunities for all its students. With 16,000 students, it should be impossible to deliver individualized experiences on this scale. But we got creative to tackle this problem that faces all universities globally. Macquarie Business School partnered with Forage, a leading Australian edtech company. Forage provides online access to world-class content from leading organisations and has proven to give students a strong competitive advantage. Those completing Forage's virtual job experience program are four times more likely to receive an in-person internship or job offer. Through the virtual experience program, we've been able to access a more diverse talent pipeline and it allows us to showcase the work. Students get the experience to actually try the work before they even apply for the role with us. We embedded Forage's virtual experience programs across 15 different courses and from March to September 2021, nearly 1,000 postgraduate students participated in the project. We have received outstanding student feedback and already seen upward trends in employability development and employment outcomes. The simple six-step blueprint we have developed is easy to scale, so it's our goal to roll this out across Macquarie University and see many more thousands of students benefit in 2022. A 400% advantage when it comes to getting a job is an opportunity we cannot ignore. The model can also be adopted by other universities globally and we hope the success of this project will go beyond Macquarie Business School and a generation of university students globally will reach their potential. And Macquarie was, um, Macquarie, excuse me, they were shortlisted for uh, the employability, nurturing employability award just for using Forage. So uh, we've been inspired to come out with our own awards around experiential learning coming soon. Um, but now I wanna show you since, you know, we saw that video about how McCreary University is using Forage or one of our earliest school partners too. Um, I wanna show you how they package and distribute these simulations to students in classes. And it's uh, via pages like this, which are very easy to make and uh, anyone can make them. Uh, it takes a couple of minutes. Uh, they feature your school's branding. You can add a logo and a picture of campus, wherever you like, text, and pick the simulations that you want students to participate in. So let me show you their portal so you can see how, what it's like to make this. So this uh, portal where you make classes and you know these pages track student participation, uh, every school that is within our system has access to this. Um, so instructors can go in, or I know career centers that make pages for faculty, so make it even easier for them, you know? Um, add a logo, add some text, like I said, and then just pick the simulations that uh, are best for that subject or best for that use case or program. Very easy, just click on the tile. And you'll also see kind of the length of the simulation here. Um, we also have this resource that is an index and shows you the skills. Sorry for hopping around so much. But this is really handy because this sheet will show you the skills that employers have said students gain or enhance as a result of completing their simulation. And it also lists uh, the target degree, which is a loose academic focus. So um, because there are critical thinking classes and uh, you know, liberalized classes that use these consulting simulations. I think the most important thing to pay attention to are the skills, you know. Um, 
Some of them are very transcendent. They could work for a wide variety of subjects and majors. But this sheet is here to give you, to help you map which simulations might be best. And it's very long, I won't uh, scroll through all of it. But okay, let me go back into the portal so I can show you where you see the data from participation. So each instructor can, once they've logged into the dashboard, see the data for their page, just for their students by clicking on the name of their page or uh, their class. And also download a uh, sheet of all the individual student emails. So very easy. Build a page, share it externally with students and track participation. So now that you've kind of seen the setup from an instructor's perspective or an educator's perspective, I wanna show you what the student experience is like. And I always show this simulation off because uh, it's uh, what I've done and um, I'm familiar with and I really like it, but uh, it, it'll give you a good sense of uh, the flow of all of the simulations because uh, they all follow the same flow. Some have more tasks than others um, and they vary in length, but um, they can do this out of order to the students. So these are totally self-paced, there's no deadlines, but all of the tasks have uh, the same six aspects where it starts with a video, you know, maybe uh, instructions from their supervisor, kind of role play happening here and uh, background information on the task. I won't bore you by reading all of this, but generally this task involves uh, them sitting in on a phone call conversation. And so here's that phone call transcript and their task is to write back to their supervisor, you know, with a summary and a recommendation and every employer provides the learner with resources to help them with each task. And in this case, it's notes from the call and uh, an email template to help them, you know, guide their communication to all the important tidbits and a frame for how to write it. And then the student um, takes a shot, right? They, they submit the work. And after they submit initially, you know, having tried it out themselves, model work will unlock. This is already unlocked because I'm in a demo version of this, but this model work will show them, okay, you know, if you started working as an investment banker for JP Morgan tomorrow, you know, you've got a sense of how you would have approached the task. Now the student can self-assess, all right, how did I approach this task? How did a seasoned um, employee for JP Morgan do the same work? And they're free to resubmit as many times as they like. And that's really how you learn, right? You do something, you reiterate, and, and then you've really got it. Um, of course, no pressure on the student to apply or be visible to the employer, completely up to them, but there is an option for them to uh, choose to be visible to the employer, allow uh, JP Morgan to contact me, they can just click a button. They can also share a bit about the opportunities they're looking for, upload their resume, that kind of thing. But regardless, you know, if they uh, just do this all anonymously, they still get a certificate of completion which lists all of the tasks that they did in that simulation. And, you know, I most commonly see it under certification on a resume, but it has that company's name, it lists the tasks that they did. So you can leverage that lingo like uh, cash flow modeling and comparables analysis. You know, it's very rare that you have exposure to that insider language. So th that's a great way to stand out, not just for the employer whose simulation you took, but um, for their competitor too. So, um, you know, just uh, the student would not be listing it under professional experience. This is a hypothetical project, but the experience at the end of the day is what makes them good candidates. And so here's kind of like a smaller view of what a certificate looks like, but it has a little credential ID here that they can add to their LinkedIn profile. So it shows up there as well. And, Remember I said I worked for Jamba Juice uh, and CVS as a cashier. Boy, would I have loved to be able to have a cool headline, virtual experience program participant at Deloitte or Accenture. And this is a big thing is about boosting students' confidence and showing them, yeah, you have what it takes to do these uh, projects at these big name companies. Look, you just did.
So, um, and, and this, this you know, guide for you know, how students should list uh, their certificates on their resume and LinkedIn, it's available to them in every single ta um, simulation uh, when they go to look at the task and submit. Okay. Now it's very rare. Actually, I've never heard of instructors actually grading the work that students uh, submit in the simulation because they haven't been trained, right? We want to build their confidence. They, they haven't been trained to be a software engineer for EA or a consultant for BCG. So, um, and it's really about cre cre creating space for them to think about what they've done. And that's why I think it's such a powerful academic exercise to have them do a job simulation. And for experiential learning in general, you know, um, the reflective piece is very important for digesting and absorbing the skills. And uh, so usually there is a activity that sits alongside the student's participation. And we have uh, this document for you, uh, you know, assembled some popular journal um, ideas and reflection prompts that are ready to go. So the instructor doesn't even have to come up with an activity. They can, you know, you, you all can use these however you want. Um, but this reflection uh, sample sheet assessment guidance also has ideas for, you know, having students do a mock interview and helping uh, them speak out loud with each other about the skills they've gained and really practice for speaking to what they did uh, in the simulation, what it says on their certificate uh, for when they get ready for an interview. So lots of ways to set up discussion prompts and your LMS or um, just get this to come to life for the students. Okay. So I'm gonna go back into my deck here. So now that you have a sense of how academics are using these job simulations, um, you know, this slide is also here so that you have a deeper sense of the process, but this is a end-to-end -end complete experiential learning delivery. They even have the reflection prompts <laughs> ready to go for the instructor to use anytime. And so it's like a one, two, three process is first build a custom branded landing page, it just takes a couple of minutes. That the link to that page tracks participation, it's shared externally. After the students uh, done, have them write a reflection or do another activity about what they've learned and that's really what's assessed. And the academic can track student participation in their free dashboard. So it's very simple. It's, uh, it's the why not option and students are always grateful for an opportunity in class to be given a chance to gain new skills, and uh, over half of the students that participate change their mind about a company or a career. Um, almost all agree that pre-skilling gave them more confidence to apply for a role. And um, a great number are more inclined to work at companies that invest in their skilling before they start a role. You know, a lot believe that companies have an obligation to skill and educate the workplace of the future, workforce of the future. And I'm sure this is really rewarding for instructors too. Uh, I have a couple of reviews here. Uh, one from Janine who uh, teaches an internship class and is an internship coordinator at Stevenson University and is really fun to work with. Um, but what she loves the most about uh, the forage is uh, the student project work required is about as close to real world as you can get without being an actual paid position for the company. And so she wants to use uh, the simulations for their internship program, as long as there is an internship program. And uh, it's also a great way to enhance core subjects, like, uh, you know, Professor Delzell, who um, is an instructor at the University of South Carolina and teaches uh, a master's in HR class. Um, he said that it was a very realistic job preview of the life of an HR professional. Every student has commented on the quality of the experience and how it has launched their 16 month experience with an outstanding hands-on initiation. So he said, it's an excellent example of industry and academia working closely with each other. And really that's what we wanna do is strengthen connections between industry and education. So 
So uh, before we make space to hear some of your questions, you're gonna be getting this deck and uh, along with our self setup guide. And uh, within this deck, you'll find a link to our team calendar. So uh, please feel free to book some time and we can brainstorm other use cases, uh, book a faculty info session. I'm used to doing a lot of those. You can be creative with how you use these simulations. There's no rules on how you leverage this free resource. Um, and if you've been thinking about creating a class around career preparation, this is an awesome resource to build the syllabus around. So um, I hope you'll join our revolution and uh, help use these simulations in an impactful way. And together we can really bridge the gap between education and the world of work. Questions? So my heck, we're gonna jump right into questions and we'll take the first one. Are there projects that would be appropriate for humanities students, those interested in nonprofit type work? Yes, so firstly, we are very focused on diversifying the content uh, the types of simulations in the library. Um, but right now there are some that I think would be great for a humanities major. Uh, you know, I, uh, as a political science and rhetoric major myself, I would have loved to see what it would have been like to do some projects as a lawyer. Um, we have a marketing simulation, a consulting. We do have uh, some simulations focused on social impact, uh, one from the NSW government, another one around HIV and AIDS policy. Um, and hopefully more to come soon. And if you all, you know, um, if you all have connections to employers, uh, you know, and who you'd like to nominate and see them make a simulation and host on Forage, uh, we can offer them special pricing, I believe. So send us an email. And uh, if the employer wants to request a demo, they can speak to our sales team and they should just let them know that you all referred them. Thanks, Matt. Are the projects clearly labeled as to the business that put it that put it forth and the location of the business? Thinking like a student. Yes. So uh, some of them it very clearly labeled who the employer is, uh, and some of them say global. Or others will say Australia focused or APAC focused. You know, it's a globalized world now. So I think there's great value in being able to have something on your resume that speaks to uh, some international perspective. But yes, there it's pretty clear. Thanks. Are there simulations geared towards those who are studying healthcare management or CIS with a healthcare focus? Um, we have one that touches loosely on healthcare, you know, that Australian HIV one. It's more around the, the policy side of it. Um, so I think that's another great area that we'd love some help to grow in. Thanks, Matt. How is Forage being used by students enrolled in associate degree programs? Oh, the same way it is by students in MBA and uh, uh, other uh, levels as well is uh, they either take it as a extra credit assignment or to fulfill an internship requirement if there is one. But I think I went to community college too, by the way, I transferred. And um, so I think it's very great in that early stage, it can help them narrow in on their major and academic focus. So yeah, I hope that helps. <laughs> Can faculty and staff participate in simulations to get a sense of what they look like and learn more about a company or industry to best support our students? Oh, I love that. Yes, absolutely. Go for it. Please do. I'm always very impressed when instructors and uh, career center folks try out a simulation themselves and put it on your resume, the certificate. But that's a really good way to see what the experience will be like for your students. So um, absolutely, I encourage you all to do that. Is there a way to request a demo for our individual institutions? Absolutely. Um, you know, you can feel free to book yourselves in our uh, calendar link. I'll put it up here again. Uh, you. you can book any time. We'll look forward to meeting you. Thank you, Matt. Can you clarify if faculty participation is required or if this can be just run through the career office for exploration purposes? And what is the revenue model? Okay, yes, so let me first answer the latter part, the revenue model, because this is a question we get a lot is, uh, how are you all free? Um, the employers pay. So um, they invest to host these simulations so that they're free. 
for schools and educators and students and learners everywhere. Um, and career centers, uh, you know, if, absolutely. I think you can uh, market this resource uh, and just share information about it with your students. I will say that when you do tell students about it, make sure that they know and put in a different place from like job boards or internship listings because we want students to take advantage of these and they should know this is not a competitive opportunity and uh, you don't have to apply. And a lot of the things I think that um, are drawbacks for students going after the traditional uh, resources is, you know, those things, is co the competition and the application. So this is um, an immediate way for, especially if they don't have anything on their resume. So we have a marketing kit and it can help you speak to how it is. So absolutely, you can just tell students about it too. It doesn't have to be a class assignment, but uh, we think that's a, a really one of the best use cases for it. Um, so yes. How are employers selected to participate? How do they use this with their summer internships? Very interesting. Yes, um, so some of them will even have their interns participate in this as part of their training if they haven't already taken one. Um, and so they use them, you know, as much as they can. And uh, they essentially, you know, uh, they want to scale out uh, one of their business areas or create a place for anyone to, you know, if you're going to have these projects all the time and do internships for them, why not just pre-make that experience and open it up to everyone? So uh, I hope that answered their questions, but they do, uh, some, some employers will use it as part of their uh, onboarding for interns as well. How is Forage being used by students enrolled in associate degree programs? The same way that they are for all other students, um, you know, depending on the class and the instructor, but they participate, uh, they get, there's no educational threshold is what I mean, is because the tasks are so close to what you would do there if you actually were working there. So it's just a chance to expose anyone at any level to what the real uh, activities are like in that industry at that specific employer's workplace. So um, yeah, they benefit from them, they learn from them, just like all students. Would there be projects for pre-health majors, education, psychology, sociology? Yeah, I think that's another area that we're looking to grow in um, is the healthcare field. Uh, but we do have the Australian HIV uh, simulation that uh, check that one out and see if that would work for some of your students. Um, we also have, you know, simulations around imposter syndrome and just work readiness, you know, the STAR technique. That works for every student. So if you just want to create an interactive way for them to be more career ready, try out one of those. Are there simulations specifically geared toward community college and associate degree seeking students? No, we, th this is a, uh, they're not geared specifically towards community college students. I can tell you that many of our employer partners want to see community college students using these simulations. They are eager to connect with them and reach them and uh, have them in internship roles. And so these are open to everyone and there's no uh, different way that someone at a different level would use them. It's a pre-made simulation that anyone, regardless of what school they're at or you know what level or grade they're in, uh, will have the same opportunity to experience what it would be like to work there. Is this a form of micro-credentialing? It is a form of uh, credentialing for a short experience, um, you know, the certification. So um, yeah, I think that uh, I would say yes. Uh, it's an employer sponsored certificate for a short amount of time, five to eight hours or so. Yes. Thank you. Are the categories of projects on the Forage homepage outside of the education partnerships the same as what faculty could select from? Yes. Absolutely. So the same ones that students can just see on our main page, the course catalog, are the same ones you all can pick from if you wanted to put them on your class page. Thank you. Does the company actually review the student work or is the student visible to the company in any way? So uh, while the company can see the work, what's more important is actually seeing the student resubmit, you know, because they know they haven't been trained. Uh, 
on their specific workplace. It's the fact they were self-motivated enough to spend eight hours trying out this work. And that's someone who wants the job and they want candidates who want to work there. So there's no um, pressure or expectation that they be visible. But what I mean to say is participants can do so 100% anonymously. Uh, but if they would like to be visible, then there's that opportunity that they can be reached out to by recruiters on the platform. Thank you. Can students search by skill to explore skills too? And do students receive a certificate for participating, not necessarily for their content? Yes, you're right. So uh, the latter, they get a certificate uh, just for completing and uh, submitting all the tasks in a simulation. It's just like a regular internship. You know, you <laughs> might have done not well, but you still get to list that on your resume. And uh, the first part of the question was, uh, what was the first part again, Meredith? I'm sorry. Um, here. Can yes. students search by skill to explore skills and students do students receive a certificate for participating, not necessarily for their content? Right, so yes, very soon, students will be able to find simulations based on skill very soon. I think I've seen it in beta in a couple of places. So I know that was a big ask. And also, yes, they get a certificate for completing the simulation, regardless of, uh, if, you know, so long as they tried. What kind of information do the employers get about the students who participate? And how does the platform cite or capture the NACE competencies? Or does it cite? which ones are covered for each experience. So what kind of information do the employers get about the students who participate? Mm -hmm. And does the platform capture the competencies at all? So if the student chooses to share information about themselves with the employer, then um, that student can upload as much or as little information as they like. So their resume, their talent profile, you know, indicating what areas they're interested in, that kind of stuff, it's completely up to the participant. And um, what was the other part again? I'm so sorry. No, it's okay. And the NACE competencies. And the NACE competencies. They're not listed on the simulation itself, but um, in this deck, you'll see how all of the simulations naturally embody all eight competencies. Um, what the simulations do list is the specific skills the employer has intended the students to gain. So it's a they're putting all of the competencies into practice and gaining specific skills that the employer has outlined for them. What's the percentage of students hired by companies that they completed work for? So a forager, you know, a learner on forage is two times more likely to get an interview and four times more likely to get an offer for an internship. Now that's compared to someone who applied but didn't bother completing a, uh, the employer simulation. So for about eight hours of uh, work, that's quite the advantage. Do you have any examples of how career services staff have gotten buy-in from faculty to incorporate Forge in their courses? Yes, so I would recommend uh, new faculty. You know, they are usually very open to adding something to their courses. Um, also, faculty info sessions. Um, if you have any faculty that you're already connected with that uh, already you know, are connected with the Career Center, have them ask other faculty. And we see this, I see this a lot, uh, where one instructor will use it and they will tell another instructor and then it just kind of spreads uh, once they see how beneficial this is for their students. Um, and so it's just about spreading the word to them and. Um, I also sit in on faculty meetings and just like 15 minutes for me to do a quick info session about this free resource that's out there that you can use to give your students a serious advantage um, and uh, may add the color of employability to your course. Is there a single sign on option for students or do they need to create a login account through the website? No, there's no single sign on for them. And so it's all an external login. We won't be uh, going, it's, it's really fast. You can start using it because there's no process by which we need to set you up or anything.
what are the requirements and guidelines required for a company to participate? And oh, how do you vet them? So um, that's probably a better question for our sales team. <laughs> Uh, I think it's a desire to distill their workplace into an online uh, training environment. Um, probably other considerations might be areas, uh, industries, and um, that are not already covered in the library. And uh, they can either create the scenarios by themselves, the employers, or uh, work with a contractor we have that can help them kind of create, uh, you know, have a conversation with them about uh, what types of scenarios tasks are done there and then kind of template them out for them. Thank you. What information are employers able to see on a student's profile who has completed their simulations? If the student chooses to be visible to the employer, then it's up to the student how much information they share. You know, if, if they choose to share, upload their resume, if uh, they choose to share information about the opportunities they're looking for, it's really uh, within the student's control how robust they make their talent profile. Is there any way for a faculty member or career service staff to see the student's submission? If this, uh, so that would be something that you would ask a student to do. Um, you know, if the instructor wants to, it, to be in a use case where they also share a copy of their assignment with them, um, I do recommend that, uh, uh, it be created and done in a way that um, it keeps their confidence high. You know, again, they're they're not trained officially by the employer to do this, but uh, you certainly can. You would have to just make that agreement with the student. It, Thank you. it was mentioned that recruiters are able to reach out to students using the platform. Is this a recruiting tool by the company? Absolutely. It's a way to build a talent pipeline. And so they hope that they're reaching the candidates that might not already be applying to them and uh, opening it up to anyone and you know, really looking at skills and potential as the most important hiring metrics. Do you share data on how many of our university students are using outcomes, the student reflections, et cetera? Data on the student. Yeah, yeah. I'll, put, I'll post that in the chat for you. Yeah. Do you share data on how many of our university students are using, comma, outcomes, comma, the student reflections, et cetera? And we'll go ahead and post that. Right. So you actually can access your dashboard if your institution's listed in Forage and see for yourself the number of completions, uh, enrollments. Um, and then if you ever wanted to use it for in, in a real use case and create your own class page, uh, for example, for a subject, then uh, you can also then see individual participation. So you do have access to a dashboard. And once you register as an educator and we approve your account, uh, which a lot of you have done, I see. <laughs> um, so it might take us a bit just to get through and approve you all. Uh, you'll be able to see that information. To whom do we speak about the vetting of the simulation? That would probably be a good question for our sales team. You know, uh, the vetting of the simulations, uh, I, I imagine as in, is the content, that question is around, is the content something that we would want to feature as a simulation on Forage? So uh, I think that's a better question for them. But I imagine if it's like an industry that we cover, that we need and um, the desire of the employer to really use this to reach um, everyone who might not already be applying to them. Okay. The heck, this will be the final question for the group. Are there any simulations specifically for basic accounting skills, such as payroll or bookkeeping for associate degree seeking students that can be used in the lower level accounting courses? Ooh, uh, off the top of my head, I would have to check the the index of all the skills in each simulation. And, um, but I would definitely check out the catalog, look at the accounting simulations. And once you click into that, uh, look at the skills for each task, as that's a good way to pick. Or we can schedule some time and uh, uh, brainstorm together. But thank you so much. Great questions, everyone. Thank you for the opportunity, Nace. Great group. And I look forward to seeing you all use these simulations. Thanks so much and have a great weekend.
Thank you, Mahek Hassan and Forage for a very informative session. And thank you participants for attending today's webinar. The archive along with step-by-step -step instructions on how to receive these items will be made available within three to five business days. Please note that the PowerPoint presentation will be made available following today's webinar. We would like to thank you for attending today's session. This officially concludes the webinar and you may now sign off.